I get the question a lot, what programming language should I learn first? And I always see this on YouTube and people always say, well, whichever one you want or whichever one you're most passionate about, but not me. Now, if you want to do web development, go start studying JavaScript and frameworks. I think that'll be a great use of your time. And I'll link some of my friends' channels down below if you want to do that. However, if you don't know what language you want to learn and are really not sure about what application you want to use it for, I'll tell you the answer. Start with Python. Python became the most popular programming language in 2018. And because of its popularity, pretty much everyone I know uses it in some way, even if it's not your main programming language. Even if you're coding day-to-day -day with Go, for example, like me, you may actually have your deploy scripts written in Python. Or maybe you need to get some data off a website and build a web scraper. Or if you need to analyze some data, use Python and Pandas. Or even if you want to write a neural network or use a quantum computer to take over the world, Python. Trust me, this is not a skill that you'll regret learning. And so here are my top five resources for learning Python, even if you're a beginner. I'll link all these resources down below as well, and if you stay to the end, I'll also cover some projects that you can do in Python and how to get inspiration for doing your first Python projects. Number one, the Python for Everybody specialization on Coursera. Now, I adore Dr. Chuck, who's the professor for this specialization. Some of you already know that I worked at Coursera for a couple years, and I actually got to meet Dr. Chuck, and I actually squealed with joy when he gave me a sticker. So if you don't know about Coursera, it's an online platform with free and paid courses. The cool thing about the specialization is that it really truly is for beginners. So it covers programming logic and Python and databases. All of this is super useful for learning how to program and actually put it together into a real life application. And at the very end of the specialization, you actually do a capstone project where you take all these skills that you've learned and put them together and actually build something new. At the end of the video, I'll talk a little bit more about the project that I did and how Python actually changed my life. Now, the specialization says it takes about eight months to complete, but I really think you can move a lot faster. You should really commit about an hour a day to studying Python and programming. Sometimes going too slow is the same problem as going too fast, you just don't retain the things day to day. The best thing you can do is make a plan to study daily and set aside that time to really understand the concept and hone those skills. The best part is there's really no requirements for taking this course. No math background, no computer science background. Now some languages and courses really cater to not beginners and experienced programmers when they're teaching the beginning concepts, but not this one. This really focuses on how computers think first of all, so you build that intuition in programming. The most striking example of this is when Dr. Chuck shows a list of numbers on the board and says, well, if you want to find the largest number here, how would you as a human look for it? Well, as a human being, your eye is immediately drawn to the larger numbers with the more digits. So you can immediately be drawn to those three digit numbers and identify them and only read those to see which is the largest. But a computer can't do that. I think this is awesome to really help you work on your programming mindset because sometimes things just click after that. You can really put yourself in the shoes of the computer. Another cool thing is that for the first few courses of the specialization, you don't actually need to install anything on your computer to actually start writing code. You learn to code directly on the platform, so that eliminates the barrier of having to deal with IDEs picking and that analysis and learning the terminal and all that stuff. You just get straight to coding. And remember, the best part of this is that Coursera courses are actually free if you audit them. That means you won't get access to the graded assignments, but that's okay. You can still do the assignments yourself and grade them yourself. Number two is a book called Learn Python the Hard Way. So this is a great book to understand Python, but be aware that some people may find this author a little abrasive or sarcastic. Some people love it, but some people hate it. So why is it called The Hard Way? It's got 52 chapters, and at the end of every chapter, there's exercises and concepts to ponder. It explains the syntax, has you copy it down exactly, covers the concepts, but a lot of these exercises are about, well, figuring it out yourself and extending the knowledge that you just learned. But that's kind of what real life coding is like. I mean, programmers joke we spend a lot of time on Stack Overflow, but Google it is an actual awesome skill to have as a programmer. In the end, programming actually has just a few basic concepts and you put them together in creative ways to make the computer do what you want. It's kind of crazy. We basically taught sand to think with electricity. Now for someone like me, who's very autodidactic and hands-on and has always been good at self-teaching online, this book was perfect for me. I really enjoy struggling through a topic because then when I learn it, I remember it forever. However, understand that this may not be the right approach for you, especially if you don't know yet if you actually like programming, and so I don't want it to scare you off immediately. But if you do want to learn Python the hard way, this is a really good choice. It's a polarizing choice, but it worked for me. Number three is Codecademy. So I've covered video-based learning and I've covered a book, but this is a hands-on coding platform. This course includes coding challenges and takes you through building projects to learn to code in Python. Beyond Python, it also has a lot of other courses on front-end development, data science, C++, Java, C Sharp, 
basically almost every technology that you can think of. You code in the browser so you don't have any installs to worry about and you get grades back immediately. You're given hints if you get stuck and there's a community to interact with if you don't understand the concept. Gamified learning is the future. By the way, if you sign up for it and it forces you into like the pro side of it and asks you to give a credit card, if you just exit out of the screen and navigate back to it, you can skip through it and get all the free courses. Now, some of the courses are free, but some are paid, but there are student discounts. But for example, if you just wanted to try out Python and see if it's right for you, the Python 2 course is free. And there's a little bit difference between Python 2 and Python 3, main thing being actually how the print works. But if you learn Python 2, the transition to Python 3 really won't be that hard. If you can though, I recommend learning Python 3. Resource number four is Python Crash Course. This book is amazing, mostly because it's one of the most approachable books for absolute beginners in the field. Once you learn how to program, some things just become second nature to you, but this author really knows how to put himself in your shoes as you're going through learning these concepts for the first time. It not only helps you how to code in Python, but it also introduces you to libraries that are really useful when you're doing your projects. It also helps you polish your programming skills, which you can apply to any language, and helps you write good, scalable code. So the first part of the book covers those core concepts in Python, and the second part covers projects. You can build a game, you can write a neural net, you can really do anything with Python. My number five resource for learning how to code in Python is actually YouTube. There are so many amazing programming tutorials in Python on YouTube, but why are there so many? You know, everyone who teaches on YouTube has a different style and a different approach, and some channels may work for you, and some may not. I do want to shout out Caleb Curry, who has a seven and a half hour Python programming all-in-one tutorial for free on YouTube, from the basics all the way to coding an app in Django. Another great YouTube channel is Free Code Camp. Now, you may know about the online coding platform, but did you know they also have a YouTube channel? They have a four and a half hour full Python course for free on YouTube and more videos on Python projects and going deeper on topics like data analysis. And of course, I gotta shout out my own channel. I definitely wanna talk more about Python here, especially with the applications in quantum computing and deep learning and machine learning. So stay tuned and subscribe to this channel as well. So now let's talk about projects to actually practice your Python skills. Knowledge is really useless unless it's practiced. And once you take off the crutches of the IDEs and the courses that handhold you through these projects, you're really gonna learn a lot. So you'll not only learn those programming skills, but you're also gonna learn the time-honored programmer tradition of Google it and Stack Overflow to understand how you actually use this thing in your own code. And I feel like the best way to actually practice a coding language is to solve a problem that you have with code. Let me tell you what I did for my capstone project in the Python for Everybody specialization because I'm very proud of it. So actually I had a massive problem and I was having massive skin breakouts. And would you believe it that Python actually helped me solve my skincare problem? I used Python to build a Django app where I would input all the products I used in the past and whether I had a breakout from them or not. By the way, Django is a backend web framework for Python. I also use Python here to scrape data off the website for all the products, including the ingredients list. So then I took those ingredients and then I actually cross-referenced another database, which had skincare toxicity ratings, irritation, whether it clogged pores or not. And I took all that data and I combined that together to predict what would actually give me a breakout. And then I found it, the ingredient and the product that was my culprit sweet almond oil in the Cetaphil in a tub, which was really annoying because it's supposed to be like the best dermatological recommended product and it gave me breakouts because of that sweet almond oil. And now I always avoid it. So Python helped me save my skin. So really, when you look at a project to do, look around the world and see what's annoying to you and what can you solve with code. Maybe you could automate good morning texts to your significant other. By the way, neither of us hold liability if that said partner gets mad because you're automating good morning texts instead of sending them, so FYI. Or maybe you wanna build a web app and use Flask, a Python framework. Maybe you need to, I don't know, like I do, I always write my tags when I upload a YouTube video in a list and I actually need them to be comma separated. So I made a utility to move that list into a comma separated list. Yes, I actually use Python to help me with my YouTube video uploads, including the Go video that I just posted. You've got to have a problem that can be solved with Python. It's so versatile. It's used in quantum computing, in robotics, in AI, and machine learning. And honestly, I use Python to automate all my boring little tasks. So I hope you'll start learning some Python if you're new to coding and really commit to getting through a book or a course. And I know sometimes that motivating yourself is hard, especially when you're doing it all alone and you feel like you don't really have a lot of support. So stay tuned and subscribe for an upcoming video where I talk about how I took 22 Coursera courses in just three months and how to really motivate yourself to complete online courses. And the key is you really need to make time to accomplish your goals, whether it's self-teaching programming or anything else that you wanna do.